Yeah, there are some games that needed to be left alone, too. Like, like what is what was actually a game that didn't need any content whatsoever? Like, it didn't need this in a later time. Not including, like, first-person shooters or online games and all that. Like, what was a video game that didn't need this DLC for? DLC. I'm actually not entirely sure. Like, it's actually a tough choice. I have always been someone who wants to go the wrong way first in games, like me. When I sense that a game is trying to usher me down a particular path to get me to run left or from left to right, or maybe to charge straight ahead, I need to satisfy my instincts to go against the grain, to explore to see what the designers have put back the other way. Sometimes I find a one-up or a collectible stashed away to reward me for my intrepid behavior. At other times, my explorations are rewarded only by the crushing disappointments of running up against an invisible wall. Whatever I find or don't find, my action is a manifestation of my desire to exert some independence, to make my own choices within a system that severely limits my options and encourages certain specific behaviors. God. That's, that has to be a quote for upcoming game designers. That should be. Like, make the Stanley Parable as an example. That's gotta be perfect. Hmm. It's spilled all over my stomach. <laughs> the Stanley Parable feels alive in its responsiveness to your choices and its desire to subvert your expectations and keep you on your toes. I think of the Stanley Parable as a sort of video game analog for Charlie Kaufman and Spike Jones's brilliant film adaptation, which gently mocked the ways in which so many films manipulate the audiences for formulaic plot twists and situations in which characters learn huge life lessons while simultaneously moving me with its formulaic po uh, plot twists and situations in which characters learn huge life... What? Did he just copy and paste this? What? Hang on, uh, mocked the ways in which so many films manipulate audiences with plot twists and situation which character. Oh, I guess it was just a copy and paste. I don't know. The Stanley Parable is both a richly stimulating commentary on the nature of choice in games and in other systems too, like our workplaces and our families. And a game that offers some of the most enjoyable, surprising, and rewarding choices I've ever been confronted with in a game. Going the wrong way has never felt so right. Ain't that the truth? Well, not really the truth, but like... A video game is supposed to make you have instinct. To like, not go in a straight line. And that's fun. Also, this guy also said, um, Ugh. spectacularly funny, packed with meaningful choices that offer delightful and surprising results, simultaneously incredibly smart, and wickedly entertaining. The bad? Nothing. Uh, the author was Carolyn Petit. Carolyn likes to venture off the beaten path in life as well as in games. But unfortunately, the narrator in her head isn't nearly as witty as the one in the Stanley Parable. Good job. That was amazing. Ooh. Oh, is this their, uh, oh, wow. This must be their, um, their software that they used. <gasps> it is. This is the software they use for, like, their textures. And their animation software. Oh, that's so cool. I wonder if that still exists. Or did, like, Autodesk just take away everything? Like, Maya is a pretty good software. Wait, I can't go this way now. Oh, these were simpler times, Stanley. But I wouldn't give to go back. 
to have it all over again? Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, we go down here. Wait, hang on. I don't recall this part of the memory zone before. What's this? What's down here? God, those sound effects. Hey, I can still have my cold drinks. Oh. Wait, I think I remember this. God, no, Stanley, it's a collection of reviews from Steam, the online video game distributor. Oh my god. I can't even imagine what's been collecting down here. Surely these reviews were glowing as well, weren't they? Um, according to this environment, I'm not I'm not entirely sure, man. I think I remember this place too. Like someone was around this area, and it showed steam. These must be the bad reviews. Oh my god. Yeah, looking at how gloomy this place is, I think it's going to be terrible reviews. Honestly, I could not be bothered to play this game to full completion. The narrator is obnoxious and unfunny, with his humor and dialogue proving to be more irritating than entertaining. Unfunny! Un... Oh, oh, hey, hey. I'm trying to make a serious work of art. I suppose I could write up a handful of gags to insert into the Stanley Parable, but the game is already such a densely layered web of profound philosophical insights. <laughs> Unfunny! <laughs> I was trying to read that. It's like, okay, who, who said that review? What? I saw the name Bug Sliva. Who, <laughs> who, whomst in their right mind would actually? make that review and be proud of it not only not only was the story getting a bit too deep into my mind of how people at workspaces deal with in their daily lives now it's getting into the part of uh of having to deal with the outside world of the video game okay yeah, game is amazing, 10 out of 10, but I feel bad for the narrator. Could someone give him a hug? <laughs> Can I give him a hug? He gave this game a 10 out of 10. Uh, Test review, please ignore. 10 out of 10. Or, yeah, recommended. Oh, no, he said 11 out of 10. I am Jim. Recommended. Oh, here's a negative review. I wonder if this is in the game. Actually, yeah, let's look around and see. Oh my goodness. This is like the back ends of the company. Like, let's... Uh, this is like where the garbage dump is supposed to be. Jesus, Murphy. Oh, here's some more. Uh, no, that's blurry. Never mind. Oh my goodness. Oh, here's one. Okay, let's see what this one says. While the idea for the game is good, for someone who prefers non linear games, this preachiness gets annoying fast. Preachy? Stand preachy? I'm not preachy, am I? You wouldn't tell me if I'm preachy. Honestly, you can. Oh, goodness. This was posted. Yeah, shocking for me. I, I always actually. Hmm. Honest, I had always thought of the game's dialogue as being rather terse to begin with. You can't know how much fluff I cut from the game to get it to feel as light and airy as it. Well, I always thought it did. Maybe <laughs> it wasn't. Oh dear, what an awful memory to have to hold on to. Mm -hmm. Black marks on my otherwise unimpeachable track record. Okay, here we go. I'm going to look at the original Stanley Parable page on Steam. Perhaps the Stanley Parable here we go. Isn't quite as sterling as I always remembered. So this was posted June 5th of 2016 by Noodle Chef. While the idea for the game is good, it, began, it becomes very repetitive and boring fast despite all the alternative endings and game cameo appearances. This game is titled Thought Provoking. 
but you'll get the idea it tries to communicate pretty fast and then it is just repeating the whole no choice in games thing over and over again for somebody who prefers non-linear games this preachiness gets annoying fast as it is neither a revelation nor very interesting it is thought-provoking only in the first minutes wow dude yeah for someone who played this for three hours you've probably just pretty much completed the game at this point um yeah let's see I'm pretty sure this game actually exists. Yeah, someone who did a non-recommended review by Yellow Dragon. For people who only think bad reviews are right, this game is the best. Uh, here's one. Oh my god! Okay. July 14th by Walter4568. Complete waste of time. They took great narration opportunity and endless decisions making, then they squandered them. The whole point of the game is whether or not you're wasting your time playing it. It's not smart, it's not interesting, it's just a waste of your time. What? I thought I'm having a good time. Okay, I am not. This game on Steam has over 42,000 reviews in this. I am not reading all of that. But I did find a non-recommended run, uh, not recommended one at least. Okay, uh, let's go find another one. Oh, this is running too deep now for the <laughs> for the the game designers now. We just strayed off from the uh, we just strayed off from uh, the story for now. What's this one got to say? You constantly have to stop doing anything so the narrator can catch up with his long-winded explanation of what's happening. I wish there was a skip button. A skip button? Well, well, yes. Yes, I think we can do that. If I'm truly too preachy, then, then maybe letting you skip ahead for just a moment, surely it couldn't hurt. Not if it means we can strike these negative reviews on record. Only positive reviews uh, of the Stanley That's my motto today, and it's always been my motto. I, I do anything for the customer, Stanley. Yes, a skip button we shall have. A skip button? Can I even make that jump? Wow, somebody actually said that to him? I mean... I actually did thought about that in my mind when I was repeating the endings. Like, is there actually a skip button for this? But no, of course not. I, I was just casually playing the game. It wasn't actually wasting my time for me. I, I was just standing. Although there were some times where I wanted to actually say something and he was just rambling on about. I, I... Now I'm thinking that I was the reviewer. I am so sorry. I am so sorry. I should have known better. You have such an amazing voice. Yeah, they're really. And here it is. Go ahead and give it a shot. I'll pop you forward in time so that the second my incessant droning starts to bore you with just the push of a button, you'll have zipped right past it. It's what the players have been asking for, and I'm very proud to have delivered. No more listening to me rambling on and on and on. No, 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 no. The Stanley Parable is a game for the people. And if the people want silence, then by goodness, that's what they're going to get. Well, don't sit around waiting for me to shut up. Go ahead and make me shut up. Here, we'll pretend... Oh my god, I actually yawned. Oh no. I'm not even doing that on purpose. I'm actually tired. Or what have you. And therefore, by becoming... Oh my god. ...so on and so forth, until inevitably, we all until the end of time. At which time, everything... Oh my god. Now you see, blah, 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 We've eaten too much and it can't be just yet. No, no, until 240. What I'm actually going to do is not hit that skip button. ...therefore becomes impossible to manufacture. Because I actually am curious of what he actually has to say. ...until just yesterday, here and there, forward and back and never a moment before lunchtime it can't be it's the only thing there is how many billions left until so much more than forever ago which is why i say 
the story and the choices or what have you and therefore by becoming it is so on and so forth until inevitably we all until the end of time at which time everything all at once so now you see blah 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 oh oh never mind i'm he's saying the same things over and over never mind 245 i i just heard the blah 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 part like twice now he is actually repeating himself he actually is just rambling about all right, I'm going to hit this. Oh, you're back, you see? Aha! You only frozen in time for a few minutes, but it was plenty of time for me to deliver a long, rambling monologue full of unnecessary verbal flourishes and lengthy ruminations on the nature of choice in video games. Of course, I happen to believe... But all I heard was blah, 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 blah. Not that, of course, you need a description of it, but if I had to describe it, I'd say it was perhaps less of a rumination and more of a treatise. Or... Maybe a manifesto. Look, I'll outline it for you very briefly and you can tell me what you think. Okay, so my theory is that any choice you've ever made is simply a series of choices made by the person who you are or were or will be at the time of having made said choice. That is to say, if by articulating a choice you've already made, you bring that choice into being, then by making no choice and saying nothing, are you not simply erecting in the sanctuary of time a monument to every person you've ever been, making every choice to which you've ever given your great gift of mortal and yet timeless thought, or rather, do all of the choices you've ever made in fact make you more not this kind of person, and in fact do the very opposite? You see, it could in fact be both of these things at once, that you are both making choices and not making choices, and that they are both affecting you and not affecting you at the same time by virtue of the fact that you both are and are not making them. Okay, at first, I was leaning towards manifesto, but now I'm going to circle around and slap the treatise label on this one. I think it has much more of a treatise vibe to it. But wouldn't you say that manifesto just has a much grander sort of tone? It has a mouthfeel that is rich with ambition. I will have to say, though, about this game, they did really well for the writing in this game. Like, heavens, at this rate, we're going to be here all day. Okay, look, I have a method for exactly this sort of situation, and I do find myself in this situation frequently. I'm going to say each word back and forth. Yeah, I, I don't know if he's, like, repeating himself at this point, but I gotta say, though, this this game has such very much dedication of writing in this game that it just goes on and on and on about it. Oh, now he's just repeating. Treatise Manifesto. Treatise.